All right, let's call the meeting in order, please. Celeste, call the roll. Metaskill? Am I pronouncing it right, Adams? Metis yes. Metaskill? Metaskill, Okay. Um, Evans? Here. Here. Right. Hellerman? Here. Mead? Here. Rittenhouse? Here. Slifka? Here. Stocking? Here. Did I miss anybody? Nope. Get a quorum. <laughs> Excellent. And I want to welcome Adam and Rebecca at this time to the commission thank you appreciate you volunteering and uh looking forward to working with you going forward so i hope you enjoy your time with the commission so i want to officially welcome thank you on so um first item on the agenda is approval of the agenda move to approve second moved and seconded all in favor aye, aye. opposed Okay, and next item is approval of the minutes of the September 24, 2020 meeting. It should be the 10th. A typo. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Okay, <laughs> I was just reading it. I thought, okay. <laughs> That's right, today's the 24th. So, yeah. September 10th. Yeah. That was a fast meeting. Okay, sorry. <laughs> approval of the minutes of December, September 10th, 2020. Move to approve. Second. Moving second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, we have two public hearings on our agenda this evening. Uh, the first one is a variation. Uh, request for variation of section 11-3-3E, detached accessory structures to allow a detached garage in a quarter street yard and a variation from section 11-4A-6 setback requirements in the D-SMR single family medium density residential district to reduce the required corner street yard setback from 20 to 1.5 feet. The location is 427 Fulton Street and the applicant is Joe McMahon. Um, at this time, I'm going to walk through the uh, procedures we're going to Followed during the hearing so everybody's on the same page and then we'll go on with the testimony um, we now enter the public hearing portion of our meeting it is the Planning and Zoning Commission's job to conduct these public hearings in order to receive testimony for and against petitions and for general amendments to the zoning ordinance zoning map amendments zoning text amendments special use permits and amendments to special use permits procedure we will follow for this meeting is as follows first the planning and zoning commission secretary a designated representative will read or describe the written items reports and plans into the record second the petitioner will present testimony in favor of the petition and will present any supporting plans or exhibits third the commission members will have an opportunity to question the petitioner fourth the commission will then receive citizen testimony both for and against petition questions about the proposal may be directed to the petitioner or petitioners witnesses questions about the planning and zoning commission process itself may be directed to me following such testimony the petitioner and the planning and zoning commission may ask questions of those who testified finally the petitioner may provide a rebuttal to any t testimony in opposition when all the testimony is brought into the record, the hearing will be closed and the Planning and Zoning Commission will make a recommendation to City Council in the form of motion or motions. In order to give testimony, please, you must provide your name and address and registration sheet located in the entrance to the hearing room um, and sign the space provided. By signing this sheet, you agree that you understand anything you say will be considered sword testimony and affirm to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth. When giving testimony, please approach the lectern, speak directly into the microphone so that you may be heard. Please begin by stating your name and giving your address. If you speak additional times, please state your name each time for the record. Please be concise when presenting your testimony. If your point has already been made, it is not necessary to repeat it. Each of these points is recorded and will be considered as the Planning and Zoning Commission develops its findings of fact and recommendation of recommendations. You may provide your testimony in written form, but such written testimony must be presented to the Planning and Zoning Commission secretary or designated representative prior to the close of this hearing. 
After the process is completed and everyone wishing to, pre wishing to present testimony has spoken, the co commission will then decide whether it's heard adequate testimony in order to make the decision. If it has, the public hearing will be closed. After the public hearing is closed, the Planning and Zoning Commission will refrain from receiving any additional, additional testimony either for or against the petition, but there is one exception to this rule. City staff will submit a report based on the testimony presented at the hearing. This report will consider comments or concerns from all city departments, such as the fire department, public works department, or engineering department. Okay, are there any questions on that process? All right, at this time, I will minister the oath for those who have signed the registration form. Anyone wishing to give sworn testimony, ask questions, or cross examine anyone given sworn testimony, please stand and wait, raise your right hand. Do you swear and affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Please be seated. David, what do we have for the record? Contents of this file include an application for variations filed by Joe McMahon, a project narrative prepared by Joe McMahon, a response to the variation standards prepared by the applicant, a plan of survey depicting existing and proposed conditions, a staff report from the Community Development Department to the Planning and Zoning Commission dated September 24th, signatures from neighbors supporting the request included in your packet, a letter from Danelle Duval and Alan Huth included in your packet, a letter from Terry Grove included in your packet, um, and then there were two letters that should be provided at your seats this evening. One was from Patricia McLaughlin and another from Patricia Cameron. A certificate of publication from the Daily Herald for the legal notice that was published on September 7th for tonight's public hearing. Finally, a copy of the notice that was mailed to all property owners within 500 feet of the subject property. All right, thank you very much, David. Okay, we'll hear from Mr. McMahon at this time. Um, I'm Joe McMahon. Uh, I, that packet that you all have, I, I read through that, and it pretty much covers everything that I well, think is important here. Um, I'm just going to run down some of the topics that I think this will give me uh, to prove my point. Um, by tearing, right now I have a driveway that's probably seven, 50 feet long. It goes from uh, Fulton Street all the way uh, north to the back to a one car garage. One car garage has been repaired. I've repaired it over the years. It's not in very good shape. The bottom boards around the bottom, probably the framing too, are not in good shape. And um, uh, the concrete is, uh, has been showing the, its age and it, lots of cracks and openings and that kind of stuff. Bottom line is the, the existing garage is not uh, in very good shape. So uh, what I decided to do was explore various ways for me to get a two-car garage, being that the fact that two-car garages are pretty standard in, uh, in this town with, with a home. And uh, I looked on uh, keeping the wall to the east and building that and building to the west. Um, and what I found in there, it was going to, um, because the backyard is, uh, the setback's okay. The wall on the uh, east side is right on the property line. So I think the way the building codes work is you can keep that wall and build. If you keep that wall, you can tear the other three walls down and I guess the roof and then build to the west. Um, it still uh, gives me a single car driveway and it's still then by creating that two-car garage is going to make it a difficult turn to go in there and then turn to the uh, and and be able to get in both stalls so uh, 
Then we, we, um, we looked at, I looked at various other options, and uh, I don't want to uh, bother you with all these, but that none of them seemed um, to fit what I wanted and make the best use of uh, future green space in the yard. So this is why I came uh, with, with the uh, project. The way I have it is it's, um, the garage is going to be pushed to the west. You'll have a foot and a half off the sidewalk, and then the garage will start. It's very similar to a um, garage that's uh, two doors down. There is also a garage on the next street over, which would be sixth. Now that distance might be a little bit more than, uh, um, it might be a foot or more. So in that garage on 6th Street, you have the park, you have the curb, you have the parkway, you have the sidewalk, then you have the apron for the garage. A guess at that apron may be uh, two, three feet. So what I'm saying is now the argument about when, uh, when this has come up is, that was done a long time ago. This, this is now, we're, this is what we're doing now. Well, I don't know a long time ago whether it was an issue or not then. And people like yourself might have listened to the arguments for that person and said, makes sense or doesn't make sense and made a decision. So my thinking about that argument is that each is case by case and each one is in its own time. Um, let's see, uh, by taking the garage and going to the west with it, it's going to open that whole strip uh, of driveway that's there now, that's going to be gone, that'll become green space. The garage is going to become green space also. And from where the garage is now to probably oh, 30 feet is going to be green space. Then the garage, the back of the garage will start and it'll go to that sidewalk. So um, if I'm confusing anybody with what I'm talking, just stop me and I'll try and clear it up. Um, bottom line, I'm hoping it's going to have, uh, I'll, it'll have room for two cars. Now, I, um, what I wanted to, and because there was some comments on some of the notes that said this garage is 32 feet long. Well, typically your garage might be only 24 feet. And I understand that. My point is um, I would like, I, I do some uh, artist work, I do some drawings, I do some woodwork, and I would like to be, have a space that would, be, would fulfill that uh, need. Now, when, a, when they say a garage is 24 feet, I understand that and I agree with it. It's not 24 feet on the inside. You probably have two six inch walls, you're down to 23 feet. In this case, 32, you're down to 31. Then you put a car in there that's probably going to occupy 20 feet of it. And then you have about 10 feet of working area, the width of the garage, whatever that may be, 20 feet, I think. And, um, and 20 feet by 11, 10. That's going to be your new workspace. Okay. It's not exactly what I would um, hope for, but it seems to be within the parameters. I don't want this to the, be the garage at all. Uh, I'm looking to a modest garage here where I can do some work in it if I need to. Or, you know, bottom line is, okay, you have your car then you have your lawnmower, then you have your snowblower. Enough said about that. Um, the way it's going to the work, the garage, I don't have any plans for the garage now. I just have that, that, uh, that size. My intent is the garage is going to have a 16-foot um, a 16, 16 single garage door that would come up, and then there'll be basically two feet on either side of that. Now again, we're talking 20, so now, so now you're down to 19. But you need that two feet to be able to get in and out of your car. Uh, the bigger door uh, allows you to come in, get the cars in there a little easier. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
as I said previously, it's, it's, not a, it's probably unusual that a house sells with a one-car garage now. Uh, and I mentioned the other locations. Um, also, you have to consider the fact that this is not a large lot. Um, there are people around me uh, that have uh, the neighbor right across the street on, uh, uh, from Fulton just built a bigger lot, obviously, a three-car garage. And there are other areas that the people that in the area that do have car, uh, more than a two-car garage. And, you know, good, good for them. Uh, but what I'm saying is I'm not trying to build a... Uh, a two-foot story garage and I'm not trying to make it as wide as I possibly can I'm trying to make it fit uh, um, as, as you know uh, oh, by the letter that I brought around uh, it um, about two months ago I think it was two months ago that um, the neighbors the, the neighbors they had some objections. One of them said, well, what's it going to look like? And I said, I don't know right now because I'm not sure whether I'm going to get a variance or not. So I took, I took minimum of what I wanted, and I'm asking the variance for that. Um, let's see. I don't want to ramble on forever because... I don't want to ramble on forever. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm willing to uh, entertain, like, if this is questions for me by the board, is no. this the time? No, this would be the time for us to ask you questions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Okay. John, I think I'd like to wait on my questions until I've heard from the public, if anybody's okay. speaking on this. Anybody else have anything at this time? No. Okay. Well, uh, thank, thank you. Thank yeah, you, we'll for, your, thank you for your time. Yeah. Sure. Okay, anybody here is willing to uh, talk on this matter? Is there a comment to our audience at this point? Yep. Public comment. It doesn't, so 17, but I shouldn't say that. My name is Patricia McLaughlin. I live at 318 South 5th Street, which is right across the street from where that garage would be. I have sent you a letter. And um, I'm very sympathetic to my neighbor's need for uh, another uh, for a garage. However, having, after having signed his letter and given things more thoughts, I have <clears throat> several observations in addition to the remarks I made in my written comments. One is in in, in excuse me. <coughs> It's a chronic cough. It's not COVID. <laughs> um, Mr. McMahon talks about his small lot. He also has a small house. And it's not necessarily a house that would need a two-car garage. Um, I would like to see, as a reasonable solution to this, where it doesn't call for a variance because the zoning is there for a reason. Um, <clears throat> when the Gerlach's garage was built, the one to which he refers, uh, that ordinance didn't exist. The ordinance is there to preserve a certain streetscape and a look to the town, which I think is really important, especially in the historic district where uh, this garage would be built. He would be threatening not only the, um, <clears throat> the beautiful and perhaps centuries old, century old red oak that's on the parkway to have where that driveway would be. He has a kind of a neat urban forest right where that garage would be also. So, you know, I think I have a garage at the back of my property. It's a two-car garage, and I have a one-car driveway that has to traverse about the same amount of distance that his present driveway has. And, you know, we manage with an apron, and, yeah, it wouldn't be a good place to turn around, 
but you know, you get pretty good at backing out. And uh, <clears throat> so I would really hope that he could find a solution to having at least the garage he wants, maybe only a one car garage with a very nice workspace because I think he only has one car. And uh, anyway, in the, in the place where that decaying garage is, and <clears throat> my neighbor, Mr. Huth, even who lives adjacent to that property, says he wouldn't even mind if there were a variance having that garage go closer to the property line. So those are my thoughts at the moment, and I hope you take them into consideration and remember what a zoning ordinance is for and also <clears throat> what um, the value of the uh, urban uh, tree cover is. All right, thank you. Yes. Hi, board. Um, my name is Steve Castell and my wife Wendy, and we live at 415 Fulton Street. So we are his uh, awesome neighbor to the east. <laughs> and um, I would like to talk about the need that Joe is requesting, Mr. McMahon's requesting, because um, a lot of times I bring, we bring each other's garbage cans and stuff in and we help each other out. Um, but besides that, what, so I have, the, I have a two car garage um, and I can speak from backing up off of Fulton Street, um, not only with the construction that's going on, but just typically, because um, Geneva is an awesome town for community activities, when you get cars back there, I have a lot of trouble just backing down out of my drive, driveway. I wish I had the ability to pull it off to the side, but that's where I live. Um, so I see the need to have uh, Joe get this variance because it would make it a lot easier to, um, you know, be able to pull in and out of his, you know, into his house from that area. Um, the advantage that I gain by this variance, me personally, is that it's going to add a lot of green space. So I'm very much for that. Um, I know there's, a, there's been some concerns about landscaping and the beautification that this variance um, would give Joe. Um, just a little edited thing to the, the, this idea. So we have this row of maple trees that um, we wanted to cut. We wanted to cut down, and because um, they shed a lot of leaves in the area, and um, we, you know, we went to Joe and we said, "Hey, Joe, we want to take these these trees down." And and Joe was just adamant on keeping those trees because he loved the shade and beautification. So Joe is not doing this, trying to disturb. Um, any trees or surrounding area, he asked us if we would leave, they're on our property and we honored his right because it also adds, you know, shade and stuff to his property. He like, it's kind of creating like a fence between our property. Um, and uh, so, you know, we were willing to work with him on these trees and he in no way wants to take down trees. I could just see it as an advantage to him about having that garage and area. Joe does construction work. He's helped us on projects. Um, I can't tell you the things that he's done for us and the neighbors in the area. This man has also gone around and plows people's driveways and pathways and sidewalks. And he's just the best neighbor. So, um, but getting back to the point with the variance, um, I personally don't have objections. I live next door to him. He has multiple cars at his house so he a lot of times can't even get into his driveway because he's so accommodating to people and neighbors and people come see him and um, a lot of times he's parking in that area where he's got his proposed garage just to get because he's got his own um, company vehicle and he's got his own personal vehicle um, and that doesn't even include Alex's car when his daughter comes over or his daughters come over so to say that he's one car it's it's, there's no way I can tell you would I have a big two car garage 
And like I said, I have a lot of trouble backing down. I'm Fulton getting in and out of that, that driveway because there's always cars in the way. Um, so again, I'm just, in my, from my perspective, um, I love the fact that he's adding green space. I see Joe's need for having the variance to put that garage out there because he's, he's absolutely telling the truth. His garage has fallen apart. Um, so, you know, and like I said, with that in total, he's the, one of the most accommodating people and neighbors, and we just love him to death. So um, I'm just standing and saying, you know, please grant him this variance. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> I'm Wendy Castell, um, his, his wife. And two things Steve didn't mention is Joe is a builder. So I'm sure he's going to make sure everything's to code and he knows what he's doing. The other thing Joe does is he takes care of his yard. He has beautiful flowers, birds. He would keep everything beautiful. He would not do it. Um, he would not hurt the beauty of the corner. So those are just two things I wanted to add. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak on this matter? Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, my name's Alan Huth. Um, I'm a, I'm the neighbor from Joe at 315 South Fifth Street. I want to reiterate what we've already heard. Joe is a great neighbor. Um, everybody loves him. He's a really nice guy. He's great around the town. We've never, I've been neighbors with Joe for 20 years. I've never had any kind of conflict with him of any kind whatsoever. He's a good guy. And that puts me in a really awkward position because I'm standing up here arguing against his variance. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because I think if you add the pluses and minuses, there are certain benefits to going with this variance, but I think there's also minuses, and in my opinion, and it's partly selfish because I'm going to be a victim of some of those of some of those issues. The negatives, even just for the town, if you take me out of, I think the negatives for the town outweigh the positives. Um, I went and I spoke to Joe yesterday, and um, what I got from that conversation was there's two main things he wants. He wants two car garage, and he wants kind of a more integrated backyard. And that makes sense, want grandkids and stuff, and, you know, it's not really quite set up that way now. I'm also thinking, as I'm talking to him, I'm thinking, yeah, but, you know, all these negatives that I'll get to in a second um, kind of make it difficult to have these conflicting values. Um, and I guess where I came down was, I think there are ways that he can get what he wants. He can get a two-car garage, he can even get a three-car garage, and he can have an integrated lawn area without this variance. Now, maybe that would require another variance for him to move the garage back up against our property, which I would certainly support, particularly if it's, you know, if you held a gun to my head and said, okay, his variance that he's asking for now, or the variance to move his garage right back up next to our house, I'd take the latter in a second. So... I think there's ways around this without actually going to the detrimental effect that this variance would cause. Um, okay, I'm going to take a cheap shot here just for a second, and I apologize in advance. But we just heard someone come up here and say that Joe's a builder, and he takes really good care of the property, and he loves, you know, he does the gardens and everything, and he's a great neighbor, don't get me wrong. But I have to, the first thought in my head was, well, if he's such a great maintainer of the property, why is everybody agreeing that that garage is falling apart? He's a builder. All right? Now, I'm not saying that the new garage wouldn't be perfect. I'm saying you can have a new garage where he wants to put it, or you can have a new garage set back, which could even be three cars, two and a half for sure, plenty of room for a workspace. You could still arc around because it would be set back and there'd be more room to move the car back up, back out, etc. Backing out is not a real strong argument because you're going to have the same problem on 5th Street. That side of the street is where the parking's permitted. So that's not going to help. So I have three primary objections to this thing. 
in ascending order. The first one is the telephone pole. I have not heard anybody definitively say where that telephone pole would be moved. Right now, it's right in the middle of the driveway, his proposed driveway. There's a span, there's two poles, one in my house, one in my property, one at the corner of his property, and then there's a pole right where the driveway goes. The distance between the end of his property and the pole that's there now is about one third to less than a half of the distance over to my property. So if you're gonna move that pole, logically, you'd move it back towards my property to make it more even. I've heard some people say, no, 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 the, prop the pole's gonna go towards his property, which would mean you maybe have a quarter span over here and three quarters span over here. I'm not sure whether that flies, and I haven't heard anybody from the electrical or from the town saying one way or the other on that. So that's number one. Number two is that 100 plus year old oak tree, which adds a lot of character and a lot of shade for the street. The, the, the maple trees that they were talking about between their yards, those trees are about this big around. You know, they're small new trees. This oak tree is massive. I don't know if it's 100 years old. I've heard it's over 100 years old. It's a huge tree. We don't have a lot of huge trees anymore. We need to keep them. That's why we're here. That's why we have a historic district. And if it's not mandatory to shut it down, knock it down, I would think you'd find another way to do it. So that's number two. Number three, my most important reason is the variance moving that garage right up to the sidewalk. There is one house on our street that has a garage up that close. Every other house on the street, both sides of the street, Fifth Street, all the way up and down, the whole street, there's one house that has the garage up close, and that was grandfathered in. That's the Gerlach's house. Every other house, every other mod, every other revision, every other construction project, every other, anything that's been done on 5th Street has always had to abide by the 20 foot or whatever that distance is setback. So we have one grandfathered in garage that's not pretty. And then we've never let another one since then. Now, if you allow this variance, that's, that's like, that's the slippery slope. Okay, the next guy comes along and says, well, I wanna put my garage up next to the street. What is your argument for saying no? I can't see one. So those are my three arguments. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak at this time? Um, just hang on a second. I want to see if anybody else wants to speak. Anyone? Okay. Um, guys, do you have any questions? Um, I think what Mr. Huth brings up is is interesting. If you if there's potential to to have a variance towards the back rear lot versus one that changes the setbacks along Fifth Street itself, where you have the garage right up at the sidewalk. I'm struggling with that. I, I saw the existing grandfather garage, and I don't think it's very attractive from a setback perspective. The building is interesting, but um, I just, I'm struggling with allowing that type of setback in the historic district on this street and in this area when it seems like a lot of the newer construction in the area have, has, it, has honored or has had a much reduced variance request if, they're, if they do have structures that, that, uh, that needed a variance. So I'm, just, I'm struggling with that when there might be other options. <clears throat> um, just hang on a second, let me see if I get through the commission then we'll Yes, John. Do we, uh, to Mr. Hughes' question about the uh, telephone pole, 
do we know? Yes, I, I talked to Jennifer Hilkeman and our electric division manager, and she said the pole would be moved to the south. And the requirement is that it has to be at least three feet off the edge of the driveway. So it would be shifted slightly to the south. To Mr. McMahon's. Uh, yeah. Right, towards Fulton Street. Okay. And then the other question um, on the survey, um, I'm not sure how much prop, it doesn't state how much um, land you pick up by losing the existing garage and removing the um, driveway. Do you know how much land he picks up by doing that? Like lot coverage? Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that. Okay. Kind of a before and after. Yeah, so on the, on the survey there's a chart of um, house, proposed garage, proposed drive, but it doesn't state the coverage is 36.8, but because he's removing the existing garage and removing the driveway, it's not 36.8. No. Yeah. It would be less, right? Yeah, the driveway would be quite less. Yeah. Um, Mr. McMahon, back you on. certainly can. Yes, Mr. McMahon, do you have, did you did you look at um, the possibility of keeping your current driveway and redoing the garage as it sits now, so as not to impede on Fifth Street? Yes. Okay. Well, I did. What was, can you explain your process of looking at that option and why you chose not to go with that option? Um, if, if that was, um, well, if I back up one minute, um, I don't have the room on my lot. I don't have any more room on my lot to build anything. It is only by getting rid of that garage and the driveway that frees up the green space for me to build a garage. Uh -huh. There is, um, I remember <clears throat> when I put the front porch on, um, a Dick Unch told me that uh, you don't have any more room left on this lot. And I, I understood that then, that that wasn't the issue. But, but my point is just the recall of that. And then as this project developed, the, the, there, is, there is no building on this, on this lot. Uh, because really the only variance I'm asking for is to get closer to the street. Uh, well, after I tear the garage down then and take the driveway out, I have the space to put the garage. Well, my point in, in that is if I have that garage close to the street, now I know uh, the house down the street is the only one that has that garage there. I get that. Um, every situation is different. However, if you go to 6th Street, you do see a similar situation. So, my point is, is that there is more than one, and I haven't gone, dr driven around, and maybe I should have. That's not, not the point. Um, uh, I, uh, but I, I, don't, I don't want to keep getting away from your question. Yeah. I, I think there's... Um, what I, what I, at one of the things I thought to do was tear the existing garage down except for that east wall and then build that way. Uh -huh. Now, I still, basically as I go to the west with this garage that's newer, it's going to isolate that rest of my yard that's to the west. It's basically you're creating a block that's not going to allow the jo enjoy it. So the bottom line is if you take that block and you put it over on Fifth Street. Now, this is not a two-car garage. I mean, not a two-story garage. I'm not infringing on anybody's uh, views here. If I push it over there, then I have the space where the old garage was. I probably have another 15 feet. That becomes all backyard as well as a greenway between the two houses. Can, can I? I'd like to add something on too. Uh, sir, please let us 
we'll get to you in a second. Let's well, just between. At this point, he need, he would need. I'm a, I'm in construction too. He would need a, such a large turn radius to make that garage turn into that garage that it would be eaten up even more green, potential green space. Just to make that turn around the corner to get to the garage. I know because I do that every day working around my garage. I, I think what I'm trying to clarify though is um, just because the concern I have, Mr. McMahon, is that enough neighbors are concerned about the trees and um, the beauty of what you have there. And my concern is I feel that you think because if I tear down my existing garage, I can't get the proper variance to build a new two-car garage there. I, and, I, and, and, my, and just my recommendation to you is, and being totally honest, I think you have a better shot at a variance doing that versus disrupting off of Fifth Street, just because you do have those old beautiful trees. And I'm not, I'm not so sure that, you know, you would have such a, I don't think you would have the um, concerns from your neighbors if you went for that variation. Uh, uh, okay. Where, where do you finish? Yes. Yeah. The concern by the neighbors, a realistic concern by the neighbors is not is not what you've heard tonight i talked to my neighbors across the street from the front of the house gave them a letter and asked them to come they said we're going to try and make it i talked to my neighbors across the street i talked to mary garrison down farther street now I, all i'm saying is that every single one of these neighbors were positive about it so if you're looking positives, if you're making a pile of positives and you're making a pile of negatives, then the positive pile is a lot higher. Mary Garrison, she said to me, can you explain the garage to me? And I said, and I started to explain it. She goes, oh, forget it. She goes, I know your work, I'll forget it. It's gonna be fine. And so my point is, is that there's neighbors, the, the amount of positive people in, in their comments, and their feelings, even though if they're not here tonight now, understandably, well, how are you going to judge that? The point of it is, is that the plur the, there's much more positives than there are negatives. And that's from the, and that's not, that's from right in this area, right where I live. Um, should I? That's fine. I think you made your point. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, does um, anybody else have any questions? Yes, Rebecca. I have a question. Um, the one and a half foot variance yeah. off. Um, did you look at plans that were a little more of a compromise, maybe with a little more, maybe not quite 20, less than 20, but more than one and a half? I mean, the one and a half is, are you, that's a firm? Well, every time you take, you add to that one and a half because what you're what we're talking, you and I are talking about, and you're saying the sidewalks here, this is where the um, <coughs> garage is going to start. Mm -hmm. Every time I move it back that way, I'm going to take more away from the backyard. And one of the things I wanted was the green space and more backyard. My backyard right now is, uh, I mean, it, it's not offensive to anybody. But it's, um, there's a lot of ground cover back there. It's, it's not managed well. Not, uh, so anyway, I don't want to get away from you. No, I'm just wondering if there's some sort of a compromise between a 32 foot, you know, maybe making that less um, and then backing it up a little bit. So you still maintain your green space, but you may work, you know, may cut into your workspace. Yeah, so um, yes. But I'm, 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 I'm only going to build what I can use. And what I can use is a garage with room for my cars and 10 feet of working space. So, uh, you know, um, and, and uh, to the comment about the, um, 
why don't you just fix that garage up? I mean, well, here's the way I feel about that garage. That garage is a 75-year-old pair of shoes. They still fit, and you can still walk in them, but every once in a while, you gotta buy a new pair of shoes. And that's about the way I feel about that garage. I, it <coughs> served me well, but its time has come and gone. Um, I don't know if there was any other. Uh, uh, I'm glad that the, someone mentioned about the electric pole because, you know, it was like um, uh, Trish's question originally was, what's it going to look like? And my response to her wasn't very satisfying. My response to her was, I don't know if they're going to give me the variance. So I did a lot of fooling around with how I could locate the garage on that. But as far as design, I didn't do anything like that because of what I just stated. Um, let's see. Uh, unless you have other questions for me. And, and you know, myself, the way I've, nope, I'm not leaving here making any enemies. That's not what I came here for. I came here for, to, to solve a very simple problem. Surely I put a tremendous amount of effort, and I don't know if you guys have ever applied for a variance or not, but it's no drop in the bucket on what you have to go through. I've put a lot of effort into it. I've tried to explain how I feel about it, and I hope you'll understand that. And uh, I guess, Okay. I've tossed the dice. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Ma'am, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Okay. This is for David. The red street is in the parkway. If he builds the garage in a way that doesn't require a variant, can he still take down that tree? Uh, my, okay, so... The, what, um, the tree has become an issue in the last month because I got notification from the town that the person, should I be looking at you? Am I looking at her? That's fine. That's fine. She can see you. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> you up. you I, aren't I mean, communicating. It's just remotely. <laughs> I'm, I'm not quite ready for that. Okay. So the point of it is, is I'm going to do everything I can to save that tree. If I have to try and move my driveway a little bit, because I really feel uh, from the neighbors, uh, they, they made this point, we, this tree is important to us. If it's important to you and you're my neighbor, it's important to me. So my point is, is I'm going to try and do everything I can not to n remove that tree. Did that help or no? Well, I wanted to know from David whether or not you could take out a parkway tree without the city having any say in it if you didn't need a variance to build your garage. But the, I don't know. The answer is um, you, need a, you need a permit to remove a parkway tree. Um, the code requires that the tree be appraised. Um, so we've had an appraisal done for this tree. He would have to pay for the cost of that appraised value and obtain a permit to remove the, the parkway tree. Can I ask, Dave, okay. would, I'm sorry, would they, would, would they have to replace that tree in, in any way? Um, if, if he paid the cost to, uh, of the appraised value, he, he wouldn't necessarily have to replace the tree. Um, if he wanted to plant other parkway trees as part of that appraised value um, to reduce the, the actual cash payment, he could do that. I, I personally don't feel that monetary compensation can make up for the loss of a mature tree like that. Uh, it doesn't do anything for the neighbors uh, or for anybody. I mean, I think it's more than the neighbors that we're talking about here. Everybody enjoys the historic area of downtown Geneva. And this kind of modification of it is something that the entire community has an interest in. Uh, the purpose of a zoning ordinance is to look out for the overall benefit of the community and not necessarily what is best for an individual property owner. Mr. McMahon has done a very good job of explaining how his plan maximizes the use of his own property. And it does make the most sense from his perspective. 
but that doesn't mean that a zoning ordinance that is designed with the entire community welfare in mind is changed to the benefit of that one property owner, particularly when the property owners well aware of the limitations of this property at the long before we made this request for a variance. This isn't something that came uh, into being just recently. Um, so I, I am concerned about the president precedent that's set. I'm concerned about the loss of the tree. Um, I'm just not sure this is in the best interest of the community, even though I can understand Mr. McMahon's position. Okay. Michael? Um, <clears throat> So, uh, you know, I'm less concerned in general with facing the garage onto Fifth Street. Um, but I think the setback pro uh, provides the most concern to me. Um, I also think that <clears throat> if the setback were maintained, there might be a way, an easier way to uh, address uh, getting the driveway around the tree. Now, we don't have any exact dimensions here, but. Um, in fact, if the, if the garage were set back that far, there are, there are um, the driveway doesn't have to be the full width of the garage. So the driveway could potentially narrow toward the street and get around the tree, it's something we'd, you know, we'd have to determine. Um, the other thing with the, um, with the garage up on, the, up on the, the sidewalk is that it's been mentioned that um, there are cars that come and they park in the driveway and there's the in and out and you have visitors and things. That provides no other off-street parking for visitors or, or anyone. So anyone visiting you would, would have to park on the street. Um, so that's another, another concern that I have. Uh, addressing the last one, the, uh, the parkway becomes the driveway. And the parkway is about from the street to the beginning of the sidewalk, that distance is 20 feet. Your car, average cars are around 17 to 18 feet long. People that were coming to visit me could park in that space. Would they not be encroaching on the sidewalk? No, their, car, their cars are, the distance is 20 feet and your cars are 17 feet. Then you have the sidewalk. Well, okay, we we'll assume that all cars are, are that length, which. There's a, there's a law that can't be over a certain length. Okay. And, and I'm just addressing your second question. Okay. That's what I felt. All right, thank you. Anything else, Mike? No. Adam, do you have anything? I do not. Okay, um, from, my, from my perspective, um, I'm having a hard time with the hardship part of this equation, which is what the, our, we're tasked to do is determine whether there's an undue hardship, what the ordinance applied to this lot. And I see there's flexibility here to move the garage, still obtain what you need to do, but not ask for such a drastic variance to the zoning ordinance. So I'm having a hard time justifying why I should grant one. Yes. Mr. Chairman, just um, <clears throat> there are four standards that we have to weigh when we're considering a, a variance request like this. And I think you addressed them in your letter, Mr. McMahon, and the staff addressed each of them painstakingly in their report. And I think three, the first three were met, and I, and I agree with them on the fourth one, which is the minimum variation. Is the, is the variation requested the absolute minimum that's needed to, to accomplish what the goals are here for? property owner and what the city determined and I happen to agree with them is it, it is not it, it's too extreme in my point of view too extreme a variation plus on top of that we have the potential with the extreme variation you lose the tree I'm receptive as Rebecca indicated to uh, maybe less variance on that side to have a, a, a western uh, facing driveway or western facing garage door if it could save the tree and also not, maybe it's 15 and a half feet because it, uh, then that lines up with the edge of the house. So that would not change the streetscape. Alternatively, I don't know how receptive you would be, but Mr. Huth 
had indicated that you could come another five feet towards his property from the existing garage if that was raised that would give you a greater turning radius to enter into a second uh, uh, parking spot in a garage and all of the and you wouldn't need to build the, the new garage per se you'd have the ability to stack cars in the existing driveway so there's two other solutions that I see that would be more preferred in my mind to what's being requested I just think that the street setback of one and a half feet is too extreme and I I would not be able to support it okay um, yes no we're still on the hearing part so you can speak if you wish my name is Jeff Rodewald and I'm at 217 South 5th Street uh, Joe built a garage for us two years ago we avoided this by keeping the existing grandfather provisions. I wanted a bigger garage. I'm stuck with 17 by 17. Really want a bigger garage after hearing this. But I couldn't make the turn with a single car driveway. That's why I don't have a bigger garage and didn't want to come forward with this. Because it wouldn't have done any good. Um, so we saved the roof and built a garage around it. And it's serving us fine. Um, but I had a big problem with uh, total lot coverage. And to your issue and, and a little bit to yours, that was a big problem. If Joe keeps the single car dri driveway, which is hardscape, and goes west with his existing garage, the city won't approve it because it's going to be too much uh, covered lot. Do, do we have calculations on that? Yeah, uh, I did. Well, it's a lot smaller than mine, so I don't. I don't have calculation. I'm just assuming that that would be an issue. No, I, I wasn't expecting you to have it. I was asking David. I'm <laughs> I, sorry. No, I no. Can, I, I can touch on that. Um, so the existing lot coverage is just under 50 percent. The maximum allowable lot coverage is 40 percent. Um, so it's currently not conforming with lot coverage. So you're correct. We would not approve any additional lot coverage. Um, the allowable lot coverage is 40 percent um, you do get a five percent bonus right. if you have a garage that is detached and in the rear yard um, so there's potential to have allowable lot coverage up to 45 percent um, but then the garage could not be forward of the house as as proposed it would have to be completely within that rear yard um, to go up to that 45 percent mark in, in our case we even if we could make the turn we wouldn't have been able to um, make the lot coverage issue so that that's just an issue that I think you need you need to keep in mind and as to precedent there, there are six or seven in the, in the notes that you all put together uh, in in the fourth and fifth street sixth street area that, so the precedent's already been set and I agree with Joe that I think it should be looked at on an individual basis so thank you I, I think the precedent that's been set is to have a garage and a side yard I only saw two examples of the setback for the for the garage from the the property line but but there but there were others yeah i did, I did. okay thank you thank you but david question for you if 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 the <coughs> opportunity was explored to expand the existing garage and maybe move it back towards the hooth property do they get any pickup in lot coverage benefit if if the the asphalt driveway is made of a you know uh, pavers permeable pavers there's no, there's no there's craft for that. It's, it's okay. about green space, preserving okay. green space. Right. And there can be a request. How, how much of a, in, uh, a request for a variance over lot coverage and someone can request? I don't believe there's a restriction on, okay. on that. So we could. So we so could that. request a lot coverage variation. Mm -hmm. OK, any more questions from the commissioners? I think this I think there's a misnomer among the public on two different people with regards to I'm not gonna be able to get it so I think that's important to point out to mr. McMahon that if you take the existing garage you you can apply for a variance to make that bigger correct right you, you always have the right to apply for a variation yeah. yeah okay yeah he has a right to do, do that so mr. McMahon to, to my point do you understand my original question because um, in all transparency I think you have a, a really tough case because you're right on the you're right on the sidewalk 
it's a request for a very large garage. And, and my r original question was, do you understand that you can apply for a variation, a variance, and it will help that your neighbor said that he is willing to let you take some of that, you know, uh, area over, but you can apply. So you don't have to keep that wall like you thought you did on that garage. You could tear down that, apply for a variance, then if you get it, tear that down and build a garage of your choice by using that same drive driveway. And I don't think, I know you said a lot of people agreed with you, your neighbors, but the simple fact that several did not because of the tree issue, I think you have a better case. Do you understand that you can do that? I guess that's my concern is, I don't know if you do. I think when you apply for a variance, you're going to apply so when you get the variance, you get what you want. You're not going to apply for a variance when for something that you don't want. Okay. okay. That's about it. All right. Thank you. Yes. Well, I'm Kelsey McMahon. Oh, please come forward. So I should start off by saying that I am definitely biased. Sure. A thousand percent biased. Could you just repeat oh, yeah. your name? Kelsey McMahon. Okay. Um, I just want to call out the one thing that I think is kind of interesting right now. He has that driveway and it goes to maybe an 18 to 20 foot garage. The variance that I think you are speaking of to is from the back of that garage to the fence, which is where your property line would be, which is only an additional five feet. The garage that he's seeking is 32. So even if we can go to the back of his, I'm only getting 24 feet maximum if I'm allowed to go up to that back of that line, which means the front of my garage is not going anywhere. It's staying right where it is, which means I'm gonna fall into that thing where I can't pull my second car into there, no matter how big that wing is. And I'm still only getting a 24 foot garage then. It max, max 24 foot. So I think that we just wanna, I just wanted to call that piece out because the garage that he has isn't big now. The variance that you're speaking to is only an additional five feet, which isn't going to get him anywhere is essentially because right now we're we're parking the car the car is maybe a foot from the front of the garage like i sometimes i just hit the lawnmower to know i'm in there you know so it's i mean don't tell my car that but like i just like tap it a little so just keep that in mind and the other thing was um i, I want this on the record i did feel like that was a low blow you know him you know his quality of work that was that that was low and i want that on the record that 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 really hit me deep thank you to the point to the point of as i understand it there's a certain area of garage floor let's just call it that, that, that you want a place to park two cars and you want 10 10 or 10 plus feet to work and to store things if you move the garage back five feet and even if you move the front of the garage back, back five feet and you kept the 20 foot depth, you'd have room to, more room to park and then you could go farther west with the garage. Your storage would just be in an adjacent stall versus in the depth. So I, I think you can get what you what is requested. It might not be where you want it, which would, would explain why you wouldn't seek a variance for that. How is he supposed to make that turn? How is he supposed to make that turn and not eat more greens? How is he supposed to make that turn on the corner of the house? To get into a second stall. Right now, it looks like there's about eight feet between the back of the house and the front of the garage. If you moved it back, there'd be 13. You'd have to. You probably wouldn't park it. You wouldn't. Out of a garage, you make, that's what I do. And you, and right. You really I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying it would, it's worth exploring. I don't think you can make that decision now. You can't take an F-150 out of there, but you could take a Subaru probably out of there. So. So drive a different car. No, it's not what, the, but but you you have to explore. Is it is it is it available? That might not be a solution. You're right. I have the same situation. Sir, would you please approach the doctor if you want to talk, please? You know, I'm just saying. I don't know. I'm Steve Castell. I'm his neighbor to the east at 415 Fulton. I don't know how he would make that turn into a second stall. Literally, that's that you're you're saying to offset that garage to where it's. Um, 
within the inside of the house. So the house, it's actually getting offset to the house. So now you're asking him to, to turn out of, out of the inside stall and, and clear the corner of his house and make her, that look, that's ridiculous. Well, I, I don't know if it's achievable or not. You, you have that's 14 ridiculous. feet now. I of, that. that's ridiculous. A car needs what, it's a 16 foot door, so eight foot per car. There's 14 feet width now, so there, it'd probably be encroaching past the edge of the house four or five feet, but you'd be going back five feet. He'd have to do a turning radius and figure out if it can be done. You, you, neither you or I can figure that out here tonight. Yeah. That's for sure. It's a problem. Okay. Any other right. discussion? I don't think there's any more discussion. Move to close the public hearing. Okay. Yes, okay. ma'am. Um, you were speaking about permeable pavers. There was a question on whether permeable pavers would give him um, a better ratio of lock coverage. And it I didn't not. catch that. I, I was, uh, I, it seems to me that if he uses permeable pavers, uh, that shouldn't count <clears throat> toward the whole use of the, um, of the um, <clears throat> allotted uh, proportion <coughs> of his property to a built space. Is that incorrect that's not the guidance we got <laughs> that's okay. right the the ordinance the way it's constructed is that any anything that's not turf basically counts towards your lot coverage so even if it's permeable pavers that counts towards lot coverage oh there i would think that he could ask for a variance i'd like him to get this garage but okay. Okay. all right thank you all right move to close the public hearing second Moved and seconded. Celeste. Evans. Evans. Uh, Mattiskeel. Mattiskeel, aye. Holloman. Aye. Mead. Aye. Rittenhouse. Aye. Slifka. Aye. Stocking. Aye. That passes. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Uh, D David. Two motions? No, there's two variances. Should be two motions. The first variation is to allow the garage in the corner street yard. The second is to reduce the required setback. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion for a variation from section 11-3-3E, detached accessory structures, to allow for a detached garage to be built in the corner street yard on a lot that is greater than 60 feet wide, subject to the findings of fact contained in the staff report. Second. Moved and seconded. Celeste. All right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just yes. a point of clarification. The As drafted in the staff report, um, standard number two for this variation, staff did not find that the standard was met, as well as standard number four. Okay. And the commission is required to find that all four standards are met to vote in the affirmative. Yeah. So if that is your vote, we would need to change those, uh, amend those findings. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's what it is. So I don't have an argument with it. I don't have an argument with that. So, so there's no change. Move forward, no. Okay. Evans? I, I'm confused on what we're doing because of what David said. I was, I was saying if you were to vote aye on this um, variation request, you would need to modify standards number two and four as they're drafted in the staff report because they are not, they are not met based on the findings in the, in the report. Okay. All right. Uh, I vote nay. Okay. Um, Mead? Nay. Rittenhouse? Nay. Metaskeel? Nay. Holloman? Uh, uh, Nay. Slifka? Nay. Stocking? Nay. That fails. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion for a variation from section 11-4A-6, setback requirements in the D-SFMR single family medium density residential district 
to reduce the required corner street yard setback from 20 feet to 1.5 feet for the proposed proposed uh, of, for the proposal of constructing a new garage subject to the findings of fact contained in the staff report. Second. Moved and seconded. Select. Okay. Evans? Nay. Rittenhouse? Nay. Mead? Nay. Metaskill? Nay. Uh, Holloman? Nay. Slipka? Nay. Stacking? Nay. That fails. Okay. So, Mr. McMahon, this is a recommendation that will be forwarded to the City Council. Um, the targeted meeting date is October 5th for that meeting. I'm letting you know that this is a recommending body, so this the recommendation will go forward to the City Council <coughs> on October 5th for final consideration. So, so, the City Council takes what you've suggested and they vote on it at that meeting. Correct. Is there opportunities to talk to the city council about this or not you are always welcome to contact your elected officials and uh, communicate your request to them there's always an opportunity for public comments at the city council meeting um, but it is not a public hearing um, as tonight was so there's not an opportunity to ask questions or cross-examine anyone else giving testimony it's strictly public comments Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. I think we're going to move on to the second public hearing item. Um, it's a preliminary and final plat subdivision. It's a request to create a two lot single family subdivision from a 1.05 acre property in the R1 low density single family residential district. This is a continuation of the public hearing that we had uh, December 10th, 2020 from the Planning and Zoning Commission. We basically just legally had to open the hearing and close it or move it to this date since the, uh, there was still some things needed in order to move forward with the hearing. Um, the location is generally located northeast terminus of South 8th Street and the Union Pacific Railroad. And the applicant is Eric and Valerie Traxler, I believe was the last name. I won't read the um, procedure because I think everybody was present when I read it, but we will follow the same procedure we did on the last hearing, which is basically the applicant gets a chance to present, commissioners get a chance to ask questions, we open it up for public comment, there's, then there's an ability for the applicant to respond to your comments. So we'll follow that same general process and this part, then this public hearing as well. <clears throat> and David is setting up the presentation. So, Mim, can you see the screen now? The presentation? Yes, I can. Great. Great. advance with the arrow keys up down left over. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioners. Um, uh, my name is Eric Traxler, my wife Valerie. Uh, we live at 2369 Vanderbilt Drive in Geneva. We're also the property owners of the subject property at uh, 5678 Street uh, in Geneva. So, uh, you know, when we uh, moved to Geneva about 10 years ago, uh, we looked for houses right in Geneva. We really fell in love with Geneva, just love the shops, love the historic district, um, everything about it. Um, we were moving here. We had a 13-year-old autistic uh, child. We figured that's probably not the best time to do a project, and we couldn't really find a house that was going to fit our needs. Fast forward to where we are today, 
son graduated from Geneva High School. Um, he actually made it off to DePaul um, until COVID hit anyway. Uh, but we, when he was able to live on his, on his own, we was like, let's, let's chase our dream and let's try to get downtown Geneva. So we sold our house that we had in Mill Creek and uh, you know, looked for some, some opportunity. And so we came across uh, the, the property on 8th Street, which was recently subdivided uh, from a previous uh, owner. And uh, that looked like our best, our best possibility to get really close to Geneva and really kind of chase our dream, um, build our dream house basically. And so uh, um, we knew that'd be uh, you know, a bit of a challenge in, in trying to you know, get access to it and subdividing that type of thing. We figured well, we're okay, we can, we can do this. We don't have a child at home anymore um, until now that we do with COVID uh, coming about. And now he lives in our two bedroom condo with us that we're, rent that we're uh, living in. So we started the process about 14 months ago. Um, we haven't obviously started any kind of construction yet. We know it's going to be at least two years. I guess we didn't really count on that, but uh, um, that's kind of what generally happens. So, um, yeah, we really, the, the neighborhood is really beautiful. And if you've driven down there, it's kind of a, a lot of people don't even know that it's there because it's just kind of a hidden neighborhood. Um, there is, the, the streets are very narrow. It's like you're, you're driving through the woods. Uh, it's very beautiful. The, the, the properties that are there are well taken care of, just a beautiful area. Um, and so the, the relief we're asking for with the subdivision is really in that vein to make sure that we protect what the existing conditions are um, that are there. Uh, we don't really want to put a, a full wide street with sidewalks and street lights and everything when nothing else matches that. It would look uh, a little unusual. So. Um, you know, I, th I think we've we've listened to concerns uh, from from the staff, uh, as well as our, our new neighbors. And uh, while our, our subdivision budget has certainly uh, gone up more than what we thought, uh, what we were planning on, uh, we do understand and respect um, the, the concerns. And I think you'll agree that we did make a lot of uh, uh, agreements to a lot of those uh, comments. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Dan Bernard. Um, he's going to. Uh, kind of walk through that. He can do a better job than I can. He's the project manager. Uh, I thought you did great. Uh, Dan Venard, uh, 18 Highgate Course uh, in St. Charles. Uh, and as Eric touched on, I've just kind of been working with Mr. and Mrs. Traxler over the last 14, 15 months uh, you know, with this, with this project. Uh, also with us tonight is John Greva from Wol Wolpert Engineering. So if there's any questions that we need to address, uh, we can. But um, so really, as as uh, Eric ac accurately touched on, you know, within this this little enclave, which is so neat, coming off a of seven you know, off of South Street, where you have the improvements, where you have you know the sidewalks and streetlights and and the improvements coming in, you pull in off of off of Eighth Street, and it and it gives you this kind of this entrance into this this enclave, um, and and the subject property is is towards the south. The the southern boundary is is the tracks, uh, the railroad tracks. Uh, western property is. Uh, is a single family um, residential as well to the north and, and to the east, as you'll see noted in, in David's comments. Um, so with that, you know, Eric is, is right on point that the, there, there are variance requests. The variance requests within here are, are touching on, uh, there is an unimproved right of way that feeds this, uh, this property. And it is, right now it's all turf. Uh, except for uh, the Ketterman's driveway, which is the circular driveway. Um, sorry, I'm, I, I, want a, I want a laser point. I'm sorry, I haven't done this in the past. My apologies. Use the mouse. Oh, thank you. So, um, thank, you. thank you so much, John. Uh, so, you know, coming in off of here, this is the right-of-way that comes up and serves the property. The Traxler's property takes this shape uh, here. Uh, with the understanding that this is all 8th Street uh, right away as, as demarked within the zoning and, and uh, the current landscape. The uh, Ketterman's driveway from here to Crawford, um, this portion of the driveway lies within the existing right away. So there is some private improvements already existing uh, within this right away. Um, so within this, the, the application that's before you is to subdivide into two other um, S, uh, R1 lots, low density, single family lots, minimum you know, within the requirements of that is a minimum of a hundred foot frontage 
uh, which, which we adhered to and exceeding you know, 13,000 square feet, uh, which we uh, well more than exceed within that. And uh, so, but the variance within the applications, and this is just kind of, you know, touching on, uh, you'll see, once again, it is, well, you'll just see turf right now, uh, well-maintained turf by, by the neighbors as well as, as the tractors on this lot um, going forward that we do have uh, low density to the north, to the west, to the east, and then the railroad to the south. Um, it's what really should be noted is the neighborhood characteristics. Um, David, you know, touched on, you know, 8th Street coming off of, off of uh, off at south is 20 feet, and you'll you can see my my tape measure out there. As we get closer, and and this is where we're starting to this is the the right of way on Eighth that continues to go back to serve the tracks for property, and then this is Crawford going to the east. Tape measure here at at this point of the tape is is 18 feet. There is there is a slight taper, and you, you see that within Crawford as well. Uh, on another photo over here, it's, it's 14 feet as you kind of make that turn radius and then it, it tapers as you go a little further to the east on the 12 that uh, David touched on. But the, the components within the variance requests are, you know, as you can see, if, if you've driven down in this area and you can even see from some of the photos that there, there aren't sidewalks, um, there, there aren't, aren't street lights. Um, the, the normal setback with curb and gutter and 30 foot pavements um, don't exist out there and it and it leads to the you know really leads to the charm of this area and the tracks tracksters were very cognizant of that as we were kind of laying out this design that we wanted to kind of keep that element that was in here uh, we've had two two separate meetings with the with, on site with with neighbors B back in the spring uh, we've met with uh, mr. Ketterman and and ginger I'm Carl I'm sorry if I forgot the uh, last name but uh, you know on site to, re to review our uh, draft that we had back in April ish uh, just when um, everything was starting to starting to turn here, uh, and we we heard some of their concerns, um, taking some of their feedback as, as well as that point, you know, taken in staffs, uh, and then we did it again most recently on August 17th back on site uh, with a neighbor to the northwest, the the neighbor contiguous to the north as well as to the westerly neighbor, uh, Mr. Ketterman that that. Uh, within here uh, we've been in, in in conversations with and as noted within uh, uh staff's uh, comments is we've been talking with with mr ketterman about uh about a uh, roadway agreement because if, if we were to uh you know gain approval this evening um uh, staff has asked and, and we've agreed to execute a, a roadway agreement that that uh, as really takes the responsibilities of maintenance and improvements off the city and it puts it on the the two lots that we're seeking as as well as uh, mr ketterman uh, as well so uh, and then in hand with that is a, a dormant ssa tucked back behind that uh, for the stormwater uh, as well as the stormwater system and the bio swells you'll see when we get to the site plan we've got bio swells to help uh, gather the stormwater and, and help slowly you know dissipate and you see that very common in a lot of you know infill type of uh, projects like this so um, this picture on the right, and th pardon me, this is uh, us, looking, uh, us looking east on Crawford. Uh, that's approximately 14 feet uh, right there. And then this is the view of the partially improved uh, 8th Street right, right away facing south. So um, this is where we've had some, some changes within our plan. So initially within our plan and in, in talking with the Kettermans, our initial plan was going to just kind of keep the existing uh, drive as is, and then pulling off it, coming down westerly to, you know, to feed the two lots to the rear. And truly uh, listening to the feedback that we got from the fire department about roadway width, uh, as well as from staff, uh, that, that's been changed. Now our, our, our minimum width with the roadway uh, for the improvements within this roadway is 18 feet um, serving, oh, I don't know how I did that, um, but serving this, uh, you know, 18 foot pavement going up in there. Um, and then with, you know, uh, our, our water stub um, coming up and serving the site, there's a, there's a uh, fire hydrant right here at the intersection. And then on the other side of Ketterman's, so the plan is right now is, is to remove the, the part of this driveway that's in, with, in the right of way, put an 18 foot in. Uh, within that, we've got our sanitary line coming up on the, on the westerly side of that uh, drive. Uh, as well as our, our water serving the project 
uh, our electric would come up you know through the east side of the right of way um, and then we've got uh, there's uh, right down here at the at the south east corner of Crawford and um, 8th is the there's an open culvert that uh, once again in there we would, we would ex and you'll see within the site plans we extend our storm down to here with an open fo open face then the to displace into that all right guys sorry about this i i thank you <clears throat> Uh, that'll go back to sharing the screen. Um, oh, let's see if I can help you. There you go. There you go. Go. Thank you. All right. So if, if so, once again, you'll see within here, uh, within the you know coming in off of eighth, we've we've got to uh, remove you know, some of the pavement within that. This drive coming in uh, off the Ketterman's, you can see within the dotted line that circular drive you saw from the from the. Uh, uh, from the aerial, we're going to come up and then, you know, feed two separate driveways. Um, as I noted before, you'll see that where the storm sewer uh, dead ends uh, shortly before the open culvert that's right here that goes underneath Crawford and then goes down a, a small creek uh, running to the west. Uh, the water line, as you can see, the separation, there's a 10-foot separation per uh, IDPH um, that we maintain within this. That comes up, um, and then what we'll do is, and it's one of the comments that uh, our neighbor to the east, uh, Mr. Radovich, noted that uh, we will be able to. Uh, uh, one of the things that, in working with staff, with with uh, Director of Public Works Brian Schreiber, as well as is David DeGroote, um, is you know being able to loop, uh, kind of listen to the comments not only from from staff but from the neighbors, and being able to loop the water for water quality here. So. Uh, it was discovered just recently within the last week and a half that this stub is while within the um, railroads right of way um, is on the north end so there's no directional boring and so we'll have to work with the right of way to uh, with the railroad to, to get uh, access to that but we will be able to stub that water within there uh, also within that's consistent with the city's plans not not only with lot size uh, with 100 foot minimums uh, we do have berming uh, from here there's there's a five foot berm that uh, you'll see a 729 uh, elevation plan going up to 734 uh, that has landscaping uh, within that. Uh, and then behind, the, uh, behind each of the units, you'll see uh, bioswales. Uh, bioswales are designed to gather our, our gutters, our, our sump discharge, and, and then slowly release it into, that, um, into the uh, stormwater system. And then within there, there's there's uh, the various gradings. Um, the the north lot is is the Traxler's lot. There is a, a pool component within there. You'll see you see faintly within that. Sorry, we, it's a little busy trying to uh, get as much demarcated in that. Uh, we were mindful uh, and even meeting with and uh, discussing with with Mr. Schreiber, Mr. DeGroot um, about uh, about our neighbors to the north and, and any type of runoff within that initially within the pool we had a french drain system uh going around the pool and it came up in our, our staff meeting that we should really entertain um uh, installing the french drain along that north boundary of the traxler's lot to help gather that uh rainwater and, and help once again mitigate how it's how the overland flow is uh is currently going and then as well as you know post construction uh landscape plan um Staff made an accurate note. We, right now, we show the parkway trees on the private lots. They need to be pulled forward. But once again, um, you know, per ordinance, they've got to be different species. We varied the species of the of the parkways uh, of the parkway plantings. Uh, you see the plantings for the berming. Um, what we still um, in the process now. We have we've hired an arborist to go out. Uh, we we do owe staff our our any type of calcs for a, a tree preservation plan. Uh, which will be, which is, is, is one of the recommendations uh, if to move forward that that be completed uh, and that will be be done uh, early part of next week. Having confirmed that earlier, um, and then just some some picture. You know, this is uh, uh, Eric and Valerie's uh, house to the to the north. Um, once again, you know, consistent with with what we see throughout Geneva. Um, great looking, you know, uh, architecture and. Uh, 
and then once again to the south, the same same type of features as as you really uh, try to find that that you know kind of hidden gem within within cities like Geneva, where you find this type of lot and and being able to build homes, you know, as Eric touched on, as home of his dreams. So, um, so with that, you know, we uh, we really appreciate your your time. We truly appreciate uh, David's um, <laughs> his fortitude as we've been working through this process. Uh, it is, uh, it's, it's been, you'll probably see within the plans, I think on revision four for a, a two lot subdivision, um, that, uh, that, that really kind of matured to the point where we can present to you tonight, a, a plan that thinks we, we fits to the standards of the city of Geneva and, and really importantly down to where eighth and Crawford, um, that little enclave that is, uh, Geneva as well. With that, we'd be open to, uh, any public comment and questions. Okay. Mr. Bernard, uh, simple question. Physically, what's, what's a uh, bioswale? Is it underground where you retain water, whether it's uh, within a structure that's holding rocks or something, and then it, the water disperses through fingers or you know, it, as, as it's allowed to by yeah, natural Yeah, that volume? is, um, John, that, that, Mr. Mead, that, that's a, a, it's a good question. And, and on purpose, because I, I needed this not only for you, but for me to okay. make sure I explain it correctly. Okay. <laughs> but. A bioswell is, is just that. It is a fully excavated area in which we go down. And John, correct me if I, if I misstep. But you, you basically you dig a hole and you use ag, you know, levels of coarse aggregate to help filter that. Okay. Uh, and then you've got a, um, you'll see this in this top detail. And these are all part of the engineering plans that are in your packets. So you have the, the coarse aggregate below that, that serves as a, a, a filter. And you see this in French drains that uh, around the, a, around all of our foundations you have perforated pipe with this right. stone over it serves as a filter and that's what this does here and then you've got a, a soil mix that it's a it's not just a black dirt um, that can compact this the soil mix has a um, has a mulch compound in it and then on top of that um, you've got um, more plantings that are consistent with um, with with wetlands with taking that and helping okay. filter that water so there is more maintenance um, and, and staff was uh, in our, our meeting that we had with uh, a week and a half ago with uh, Mr. Schreiber, Mr. DeGroote, uh, just touching on just on that. And you'll see within the packet as well, we have a, uh, a stormwater easement plan that, that has that uh, within that. So within that, that dormant SSA, um, if for some reason, um, 10 years down the line, if there's change of ownerships, that, that thing is recorded against the property so that that, that area is maintained. The plantings are, you know, it, uh, properly if there's a burn right. or you're very consistent with <coughs> other wetlands and prairies. And that is the easement that I was speaking of. Is so the surface runoff runs to the bioswale. Bioswale re uh, retains the water until it can naturally flow out. Uh, well, it, it naturally, but there also is a relief pipe. Uh, there's a perforated, you know, PVC at the okay. bottom. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Mead, you'll see right in the center there. So there's there there's a series of, of so I, I don't want to um, it's, it's not a retention pond or okay. retain yeah. that water it, it will slowly displace that and that's the, the gutter system uh, is, as well as the sumps are, are tied into this as well okay I jump in, yeah. please uh, I'm John Greva with Wolpert civil engineer uh, Wolpert's address is 1815 South Myers Road Oak Brook Terrace Illinois um, yeah, just to, to piggyback on what Dan said, I just want to add a little color to the, the bioswale areas. Um, not only will, is there a way to go back? You trying to go back? Yeah, to yeah. the, back to the grading plan. So there's a proposed bioswale in this area here and then another bioswale they're pretty close together. I yeah, guess. fairly right. close yep. together. They, they, and the, the under drains of those systems will drain out over time. The intent is for the water to filter through those deep rooted plantings, get through the uh, soil media, get through the aggregate that Dan described, get down into the perforated under drain. And then over time, it will drain out through this storm sewer out to a storm sewer that runs along the east side of the A Street extension. What I want to point out is, and there's a drainage exhibit that's part of the engineering package. There's, in the existing condition, there's a lot of sheet drainage from the Traxler's property that just runs off unrestricted to the properties to the north. There's a small section on the west side that does drain out to A Street, or the A Street right-of-way. Um, 
but the intent of this stormwater management design is to pick up everything that's being disturbed on site, all the drainage that falls on this two lot subdivision and route it through these bioswales and then drain it out slowly over time through the storm sewer and bypass the property to the north. So the discharge point for that storm sewer is all the way up here at this intersection. So we're taking the drainage that in the historical existing condition now drains to the north this way and we're going to be bypassing all that flow through this nearly 300 foot long storm sewer to, to discharge it up here. At, at which point it connects to an existing storm line? It, 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 there's not a physical connection, but there is an existing storm culvert that drains to the north. Oh, so to the culvert and then to the creek? Yes. Okay. Okay. Does that creek ever flood today? Yes. And, 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 you'll, and you'll be directing more flowage to the creek. Are there concerns that the that that will increase the flooding of that creek? Uh, it, because they, they have, when, and when we met with the neighbors, they've they've experienced some stuff uh, to the west here that is that is backed up and has caused caused some issues there. Uh, we we learned of that in our August seventeenth meeting. Um, but to to say we're causing more, I, I think what we're doing is we're actually kind of taking it and pulling it out of this this area, Commissioner Mead, and and. Just, you know, kind of pulling it to, further to the north away from the residents. Yeah, I didn't know if the, if, if the, I think you called it sheet drainage up to the, to the neighbor to the north. Yeah. If what's happening today is it's sitting there and then dissipating through the ground versus going into the creek. Are we adding more volume into the creek? I don't know. I, I, that's just a question. There'll, there'll be an increase of volume, but a decrease in the peak discharge to the creek. So it'll be more volume over a much longer period of because time. Of the, because of the bio sweat. Correct. Because you can swells. manage the outflow via the with pipe diameter. Correct. Okay. Yes. Mike. So the the bioswale acts more like a detention pond, underground as a, as opposed to an open one. In a sense, and that the idea of a detention pond or a bioswale in this case is to slow the water down, slow the flow of water down from the property. Okay. And the city engineering department will review these calculations to. Yes, we, we've had our, our public works department as well as WBK, our stormwater consultant, okay. reviewing the plans. Um, we do have some outstanding review comments that we just received from WBK today. Um, so you see a, a recommended condition of approval should you back tonight. Right. That that be approved um, by the city engineer prior to any permits being issued. Okay. Michael? And, and David, and then I think the other, there, there would be an SSA, so the city would be able to ensure that they, they're, they're functioning properly? It would be a dormant SSA, a backup SSA, so in the event that they are not being maintained properly by the HOA, uh, we would have the ability to levy a tax and perform any maintenance that's necessary. Another point I wanted to address was there was some discussion about the ability for emergency vehicles, fire trucks to, to turn around and typically it's a, <clears throat> I forget what diameter circle or it would be a, a T intersection so they could do a three point turn. Is there is there room or any thought given to doing something at the southernmost end there in front of house number two, the non traxler house? Is there an ability to put some form of turnaround at the end of 8th Street? That is, you know, we've We've ex extended a, a minor bulb uh, there. We've got right. some pretty good foliage you know, to the west and some screening that we're, we're trying to maintain that's even within the right of way just for uh, in conversations right. with, with the neighbors to the west. Um, so to the point where um, the thought was is that we're, we, it's a long driveway for you know, serving two homes. It, is, it just happens to be within the city right of way. Is if there's a need to back up, that's what you've got either uh, the tracks or, or, or the uh, homeowner to the south, you know, to, to pull into there, um, you know, ha has so the driveways would serve as a three point, yes, sir. And they'd, they'd, they'd be wide enough to do that, yes, correct? yeah. Actually, I, I think they may be wider than uh, uh, the right at that 18 foot, consistent with what the uh, eighth street is. Okay. And, and one of my, another question, I think you've answered it, is uh, and I was out at the site today, um, all that vegetation. Get the names of the, of the folks that live there. That's all staying. You're, you're preserving all that. Those trees. I mean, I know you're coming back with a tree preservation plan, but the intent is to preserve some of that. that it looked a little bit like Eighth Street would run right through there. 
it, and it, it, it kind of wants to. And, and that is, and that's really one of the changes that we've met. You know, so in, in the probably the revision prior to this one, right. um, this roadway was a little further west within that right of way, and and we nudged this thing over to maintain, even though it's, a lot of it's buckthorn and low quality, you know, as right. an arborist would right. look at it, it's still good coverage. Right. And, and, that is, and that's what we're, we're looking to uh, maintain within that. Okay. Uh, all anything else, now. John? Yeah, I guess I, uh, my only comment is, I think it would have been easier to decide on this with the tree preservation plan ahead of time instead of after the fact the arborist report that you guys are waiting on that is yeah it um i, I think the truly the spirit of it there the, the ground that we're disturbing there is there is a couple uh existing pines that you'll you'll see that uh that we're going to leave it, it's mainly for the calculation for the uh, the diameter so if i if i if i'm accurate okay. in making that statement i mean there's there's two main components that staff is interested in reviewing with the tree preservation plan and it's it's what are the quality of the trees being removed and what are the planting requirements or uh, um, for the removal of those trees in its place uh, there's definitely some landscaping being provided on the site so there's there's a possibility that it is offset um, but the other component is to make sure that any trees um, within 50 feet of any disturbed area are being properly protected during construction. So those yeah. are the those are the two components that They're we are definitely going to be on. To that's for sure. <laughs> any other comments from the commissioner? Yes, Michael. Uh, I just had a question about the the road and the maintenance agreement, um, and I'm not I'm sure is 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 Eighth Street to the north private or public? It is a, a public street. That's public up to this point. So when this becomes a private, a private road and these three owners maintain it, to what standards do they have to agree to maintain it? Um, and, and does the city have any, um, any say in that? Well, that's, that was part of what has led to this 18 foot wide minimum width and um, and the construction standards to be able to accommodate emergency vehicles and not just a, a private driveway leading down to these um, so it is built to accommodate those vehicles and it would have to be maintained to that same standard and part of that standard um and you'll see it within david's comments uh we we have the, what's also consistent with the with 8th street to the north is installing no, you know, no parking signs They're, they'll to maintaining that that 18 foot is, is to keep no parking uh, that that is consistent with not only eighth but Crawford as well. Can I ask a question, David? Uh, number five, David. I, I don't have the page, but uh, a backup special service area shall be established to ensure the city has the ability to maintain the bond. So, can you explain what that means? So we we require this with any detention pond um, or bioswale. It's a backup SSA. So in the event that the homeowners association is not maintaining it or it's not active the city has the ability then to levy a tax on the properties that contribute to that detention pond or bioswale and uh and then do the maintenance that's necessary or contract that maintenance out got it okay question on the, the once this is in effect and, and constructed the portion of 8th street to the north of crawford is still maintained by the city Correct. So it'll just this agreement is only only the shaded areas, uh, the Eighth Street area south of Crawford, the intersect part of the intersection, but south of Crawford, is, is what's going to be maintained by the property owner. Correct. From from yeah exactly that this this is got to, this is part of the public right of way that we'll have to uh, right. remove and replace just for to get this access. But sure. from from this uh, apron you know coming up to the bulb, right. That is correct, sir. No, okay. and then. So the city right now plows and maintains A Street and Crawford, and they'll still continue to do. I that. I don't know that we do Crawford. Yes. We, yes, do? we do. Okay. Okay. Um, and regarding the private agreement, um, so this is the city's not part of this. This is a private agreement. Does it get recorded? And it runs with the land. I it's, saw in there it runs yeah. with the land, so that means it's recorded. It's one of the recommended conditions yeah. that, is that it be recorded prior okay. to the city issuing yeah. any permits. Okay. It's on the title. And so it's really, and this will involve three neighbors basically, right? Yes, sir. 
and then and it, it looked like one party is going to be assigned to kind of be the treasurer and, and, and to enforce it and yeah, very similar to an HOA where they'll you know they'll um, that is uh, a good tip, uh, probably a good template to compare okay. Okay. any other comments Anna just a quick question there was a reference to someone that asked a question about protective coverings for the culverts uh, on South 8th Street has that been addressed or whose responsibility would it be to do something about that there is a note on uh, sheet 201 uh, that there will be a culvert invert protection provided but we don't have the details on that so that's one of the things we, we would require prior to issuing any permits is what those details are will there be any kind of it almost looks like it could be pretty easy to drive into that existing culvert if you're not careful uh, I, I, um, yes. Any, any thought of protecting it with a, <laughs> like a guardrail or something? You're, I think you're talking about when you say protect, it's a covering, it's a is graded it, covering for the open. Yeah, it's pipe. not a guardrail. No. But is there any, any thoughts of, and, and I don't know what the neighbors think about this, but I'm sure we'll hear some things, but just protecting it in general, that's a big hole. It's, that's a, an existing condition out there right now right. As, as you're going southerly on on that road that yes be mindful of uh, I'm sure with the neighbors right. that that make that turn from 8th on to Crawford got to right. you know that with a little ice it's going to be treacherous right. slick out there you might yeah. yeah um I had a question on the uh, water line through the UP easement I was not clear Do you, is that an existing line that you would get access to you'd have to build the line could you provide some clarity on that because I wasn't quite sure the the proposed water main yeah the well through the up portion is the one i'm more oh, yeah. concerned about <laughs> this, this east west line is existing right this north all the way up to the connection point within crawford this is all proposed okay so do you have access to do you have rights to get through the up right away we're in the process we're in the process of reaching out to them to understand uh, the process to obtain approval okay and timing in which to obtain approval to make that connection okay you guys are comfortable with that they need to have the permit and it would be per the approved en engineering plans before we issue a permit okay so that'd have to be in place before you okay we want this loop intact before the, the project yeah because right because that will allow uh will maintain water pressure and yeah it's kind of key to the any other questions all right thank you um thank we'll you. take some public comment now i don't have the sheet i don't know if there's an order i guess there we'll just take them as they come you need me to grab the sheet? <laughs> I, I think we neglected to put one out tonight yeah so i guess we'll just take them as they come just please uh, say your name and address as you come up and charles radovich 700 crawford and i wasn't going to speak tonight but i just have to clarify a couple points if you don't mind sure and my wife and I own the property immediately to the east of the uh, Traxler uh, site. 8th Street is a dedicated city street from South Street to the railroad tracks. It's improved from South Street to its intersection with Crawford. And the improved portion is maintained by the city of Geneva. Similarly, Crawford is a dedicated street from Crawford all the way to Old Spur Track or 7th Street extended, but only improved up to our property line. The city maintains that property. This is a typical, a somewhat typical situation throughout the city of Geneva. There are many other instances where people are living, uh, have homes adjacent to dedicated streets but unimproved streets. And it's the property owner's obligation to maintain the driveway from on that dedicated street to their garage or parking area. So there's no private street involved here. It is a dedicated street with improvements to gain access. And I think the tracklers understand that. Um, the protective covering, yes. There's at least two, two vehicles a year that end up in that culvert, unfortunately. So, um, mail truck recently. Yeah, mail truck. Um, 
the owners prior to the uh, Ketterman's had a split rail fence protecting the boundary of that culvert and it seemed to do the trick. But when this new home was built, they removed it and we had the problem. So uh, we're anxious to see what the protective covering is. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is uh, Carl Austin. I live at One Crawford, Geneva. I have a few comments. Um, one is I actually had a civil engineer look at the current plan, the and he suggested that he recommended that this that the storm sewer is extended to the north property line or a bioswale is created on the north property line. I mean, I kind of the gist of the conversation I had with him was that the current plan is great for the new property, but it's not necessarily great for my property, which is on the north side. Um, also, this diagram shows that the new street, it's, it's going, I think he mentioned that it's, they, they went west. Basically, what they're doing is taking away some of our green space. So what we would recommend is that the new road is right in the middle, not, not too far west, right in the middle of the, um, of the easement. I just think that would be kind of, that would be fair to do that. And then also understand that the purpose of this meeting are, is for us to comment on the plans. But, you know, we don't have it. There's a, not a tree preservation plan for us to look at. There's not final engineering plans as far as I know. Um, so, for example, the picture that was shown before showed three trees on, the, on, the, um, the, on, the, on that picture. I, my understanding from the drawings, it looks like all three trees are going to go. I've heard, you know, different things about it. So are the trees going to be replaced, not replaced? Are they going to be replaced on, on the Traxler property? I know I saw somewhere in the comments of the city that, that the trees that for the uh, path, pathway were actually going to be put on the Traxler property at one point. I think that's changed. But anyway, it just, it just doesn't seem fair to me that you're going to have, make a decision without us having input into the, tre the tree preservation plan and also the final engineering. There's also, there was also in a previous picture where there's the three trees. There's, there's supposedly there's going to be a ditch that's going to run along there. I don't know whether it's going to be underground, above ground. Um, my, I assume that I'm going to have to maintain it or my, we're going to have to maintain it. Is the SSA going to also support, um, you're going to have that included, the ditch. So. It, if that's not properly uh, created or it's not maintained, um, the, you know, maintain meaning it's it's done in the right way that we that you know, we, we're fine with mowing or whatever. But if it, if there's some huge problem with this ditch or whatever it is there, to get the water going by, what are we what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to fix it even though we didn't create this? That's that's a concern. And I guess the last thing I just want to say is that you know there's just talk about this beautiful area i believe and i don't know for sure but all the lots are more than an acre you're basically this is going to be the one the only area where they're going to be uh half acre lots instead of acre lots so the the neighborhood's not going to be quite as beautiful that's my last comment thank you anyone else wishing to comment no other comments um, you'll get a chance to say a second. Um, just anything else from the commission want to follow up on before we hear from the applicant? To John's point, and, and it's just raised, you know, it, it would have been helpful to have the public have some ability to comment on the tree preservation plan. I don't know if that's we want we, as we discuss this. We might want to consider: Do we are we ready to vote on this this evening, or make a recommendation, or do we want to? That the plan is going to be out on early next week, is what I just heard, right? Is that correct, Dan? The tree preservation plan is expected next week. Yes, sir. That's correct. That's correct. We, we were able to confirm with the arborist earlier today. So that would be available, arguably, in two weeks. Should be. As well as the ability to respond to some of these things, like what will the cover for the culvert look like, and that type of thing, correct? Yeah, should be manageable. I, I had a question, to the applicant, in terms of the point he made, in terms of the 
alignment within the right of way. Is there a reason why you put the pavement where you did in the right of way? I just wanted to get a little more clarity on that. Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner Stocking, we, um, we, there was, uh, as you go from, um, once again, in, from about this point, you're generally here, uh, you're moving to the north, there's some good coverage um, that, that right now the help, help screen the uh, Ketterman's property uh, to the west. So we're still with, well within the right of way. Um, the comment that was made that there's a ditch, um, all, all this, the stormwater is within a uh, PVC or an RCP within here is contained. There will not be a, a ditch between um, the one Crawford and this right of way. It is, it's going to be turf as, as existing correctly right now. Okay. So you shifted it to the east. We that did. We, the well, from about, we did, um, from about this point over you know it, it yeah it, it's, it's pretty much it's, straight there and then, yeah and then it, and then we we did and, and the property line you know with with our with the resident to the north is truly about here and that's really where we started skewing it over uh it, it truly about about six to eight feet to maintain as much of that just avoids all the landscaping there yes sir okay all right thank you that clarified it for me ma'am do you have any questions since you're actually with us <laughs> Um, I had one relatively minor question about parking on that street. Uh, I understand you're going to put up no parking signs on the street, but I also saw in the agreement that guests could park on the street for up to 12 hours. Could you clarify that? Uh, that's a, um, a good point, Commissioner Evans. That, that's something that the draft that's before you that needs to be amended uh, to adhere the the no parking uh, signage came in probably our last bout of civil engineering uh, revisions, you know, with which that are, you know, final engineering plans that are, are before you. And this is a preliminary and final uh, combined application uh, that, that will need to be amended prior to executing and recording. That there will be no parking, not a, a 12 hour uh, window. Okay, thank you. That's my only question. Thank you. Can I ask another question about parking? Later uh -huh. parking. Yeah, you can. So, just identify yourself there's been, again, sir. Please identify yourself. Carl Austin, one Crawford. So, there's been since during this project, there's been uh, people parking illegally on Eighth uh, Street. So, the concern is once you start construction, is there going to be? I mean, it, you know, is it going to be people parking illegally every day? Is there something? You know, if they, they can create some sort of parking inside their where they have the fence. I'm not sure if that's their plan. But there is no parking in, you know, within, you know, a block. Well, there's like two spots within a block of where this property is. So I, I just wonder if they have a plan for what they're going to do about parking, so they're not illegally parking, as they did. I think today when they took those pictures, uh, you know. All right. Thank you. Any other comments? Does anybody see any use for the drawings still? Otherwise, I, I can put Mim back in. So she's <laughs> yeah. Like Mim can, Mim. yeah, I almost forgot. The I almost forgot her. Right. Yes. Well, I guess I was. Is is there a plan? Has any thought been given to construction? Staging, so very consistent within and, this. Yeah. It. it uh, um, so within here, you've got this long lane that you know there. There's within the submittals that we'll have. Um, when we secure building permits for this, you've got the, the ability to um, not only put in a three inch aggregate stone for a sub base to, for erosion control, but we've also got this, this long lane within eighth to pull them off uh, to Mr. Luxton's uh, comment, to pull them off and up in here to st stack in here while construction's going on for those two lots. Ah, there she is. Oh, oh. Oh, she was there. I don't know how to say it. There we go. What should we do? I get it right. That's right. There you go. All right. I'm going to make a motion, but I. I need to say it properly. 
Is this a close? Motion to continue. Public hearing. The public hearing until two weeks from today so that we can see the tree preservation okay. and other concerns. So that would be the October 8th Planning and Zoning Commission meeting? Great. Here in City second. Hall. Second. Moon second. Celeste. Okay, Rittenhouse. Aye. Mead. Aye. Metaskeel? Aye. Evans? Aye. Holloman? Aye. Slifka? Aye. Stocking? Aye. That passes. Continue. All right, very good. I'll see you on the 8th. Thank and, you. Uh, see you on the 8th. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for everybody for your participation this evening. a few other items of business here before we adjourn uh, well, no problem just an update the uh, the zoning map amendment for 15 Woodlawn that was considered two weeks ago was approved by the City Council um, so that's passed we I think I mentioned at the last meeting we had extended an offer for the city planner position that offer has been accepted background checks have cleared and All right he will be starting on October 5th. His name is Chayton True. Said, uh, what was it again? Chayton. Chayton. Like Chayton. Clayton, but with a H-C-H. -H. Interesting. Okay. Chayton, Chayton True. True. Yes. Like T-R-U-E. T-R-U-E. Um, so I'm, I'm ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that relief out of your face. To have somebody on board. Um, yeah, he, he brings good experience and I, he's, he has high energy and uh, definitely demonstrated through the interview process that he wanted this job. Um, okay, good. October 5th, you said? We'll keep him busy. Yes. Um, <laughs> so he should be here for the October 8th meeting then. Um, okay. We do, we have uh, sent out review comments for the Emma's Landing Project this week. Um, so that the team is working on revisions based on staff review comments. Uh, the same goes for the Verizon Wireless Tower on Randall Road. Um, I think we mentioned at the last meeting that we are preparing to bring the mill race concept uh, to the Committee of the Whole in late October um, for the financial incentives. And if, uh, if that passes, then we would then begin the entitlement process going through Planning and Zoning Commission, Historic Preservation Commission. Um, if there's modifications based on that incentive package um let's go back to the drawing board and there may be some more time before we are before this commission um i think that's that's kind of it that i had for updates and any other updates john always has something i, I i'm gonna beat the dead horse how about dunkin donuts how is dunkin donuts yeah they, i haven't they, seen they have a thing totally david by you guys last time we talked so um, we have reached out to them. We were told that they would be back on site in late August. That obviously didn't happen. We were told that they would be back on site today. I was not able to get out there today to verify if they were doing work. Um, they are continue to stress that they are looking to open in the fourth quarter this year. Um, so we've expressed concerns with that timetable given that there's no activity taking place. Um, but they do have a valid permit. Um, a permit expires when no progress has been made for a period of six months. The last inspection was uh, about mid-June, so they're a little over three months. So we don't, we don't have any ability to uh, revoke the permit at this point. Um, but we have stressed to them that there is great public interest in getting the site mm -hmm. uh, not only open, but uh, the condition uh, presents a hazard. Sure. Getting, 
getting it cleaned up and removing construction fences and moving on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. I, I think that's good. Ma'am? Move to adjourn. Thank right. you.